so before we talk about education i just like to step back and talk about jobs because i think that's an important element of this discussion as well and i'm going to lean on a very nice piece of research that mckinsey came out with 2 years ago and the headline of that research was that technology is going to impact jobs which have low levels of education in a big way you know so uh, people in manufacturing people in hospitality people in retail and so on and so forth that's where a lot of tasks will get automated the reason i mentioned this report is mckinsey updated this report in april this year to see what is the impact of covid-19 on jobs and the impact is summarized in a headline which says that the biggest impact of covid-19 is going to be on those jobs where the quantum of education required is the lowest so those people working in accommodation transportation retail trade accounting so on and so forth are going to be the hardest hit and the simple point that it makes for all of us is the importance of high quality education just went up whether that be on a campus whether that be online that comes second but i think as a country the first point point that covid-19 is telling us is that we will need a higher level of education in terms of both access and quality to be delivered in the country the second i think it might be interesting to share with the audience because you know there's a lot of data and a lot of insight that goes that are generating especially in the last two months on what we are seeing on our platform uh so we have a large platform there are close to 60 million people on coursera globally of which about 7 million are in india and on such a large platform in the last 60 days uh the usage of the platform globally is up by 650% and in india it is up by 1100% so on a platform which has 60 lakh people on it the usage is up by 1100% these are people who are coming to our platform themselves nobody is asking them to come to our platform and they're coming to learn but this is our consumer platform we also very recently in october last year launched something called coursera for campus which is designed for colleges and universities to use as a part of what they're teaching to students and on coursera for campus which we made available for free since the middle of march to universities and colleges around the world uh 1500 colleges and universities have signed up in india till date and about 2 to 1 1/2 lakh students are learning on that platform and so we are seeing tremendous adoption which is happening in the short term now i'm not trying to say that this will continue once situation starts to stabilize but today we are in a situation that two things have happened either as an emergency response faculty universities those who could have have uh, shifted to remote teaching via zoom ms teams and so on it is safe to say that while it's a great attempt the student experience is mixed because taking a one line online class one hour online class while you're listening to a faculty member is not easy i have two kids who are going through this and i hear lots of complaints all the time but a lot of universities which is the coursera example have also said we will move to online education which are these mooc courses which are engaging courses and so on and so forth that's what we are seeing right now what i think will happen and we, we should talk a little bit more about this in detail is when situation starts to stabilize and normalize we will definitely not be at 100% online the question will be whether we will go back to 20% continuing to stay online and what can that 20% contribute i think the spending on technology should grow and let me again just use an example from the corporate world before i come to the education world so at coursera we used to have two types of employees either you work in an office or you work remote you never come to office going forward we will have three types of employees you only come to office one day a week and the rest of the time you work from home and many of us know now that work from home is actually quite productive and the amount of infrastructure that we need in the office will go down if we were to progress the same discussion and i think a number of the panelists have said this as well that going forward we may have a situation where 10 15 20 25 percent of education will stay online and maybe it will be higher in engineering maybe it will be lower in medical i think in the infrastructure domain we need two additional types of infrastructure one is technology infrastructure and the second is human capital infrastructure in technology infrastructure there is of course online platforms like coursera but i think we also need an institutional way of platforms for real time communication you know zoom microsoft teams and so on and so forth uh, universities will also need lms platforms and they will also need online proctoring and assessment platforms so i think all of these four platforms or technologies will enable a successful transition to the 10 15 20% education that we may see going in forward in the future the second thing on human capital uh, infrastructure 
the corporate world for many years has had what we call a chief digital officer i think many universities need to think about a teach a, a chief digital officer for the universities as well and some of the more advanced universities you know michigan or imperial uh, internationally have as many as 100 people in their online education team who are innovating who are creating content and there is a very clear budget that is also allocated to these universities i think we also need to have departments and some of the top universities in the country have it but i think we also need to a situation where universities say for our students but also for the wider country where you know we don't expect teachers to be able to create content themselves uh, we should be having universities build capability to author their own content and then you know like dr raj said many universities will need to provide this content to other universities so if you can put your content on youtube then the wider country will benefit as well chalu maybe i can explain with an example of what is happening and let me instead of going to ai let me take a little bit more traditional example so 16 17% of students in india are studying bcom you know only 9% are studying engineering so let's take a bcom example today as a bcom start student one of the worst things i can do is go and become an accountant because chances are accountant jobs are getting automated but a great thing i can do as a bcom student is go into the field of data analytics because that is the hottest field just given the amount of data that is being created today as a bcom student i can come to a platform like coursera and from top universities like johns hopkins university i can learn the concept of data science data analytics but your question is how do i now make that a practical experience right now many companies will tell you that there are some really good data analytics softwares that are available uh, coursera uses looker there is another software called uh, tableau so if you have to go and get a job in a good company you want to be able to get hands on experience on a tool like that and we launched something in i think october last year which is guided projects where you can come in you don't have money to buy tableau because it is an expensive software but it is preloaded in the browser so you don't have to buy the license to that software there is a live faculty member on one part of the screen who is telling you step by step how to use the tableau software and you can follow along and actually create a project on the left side of the screen by following what the faculty member is telling you and two hours later you could have analyzed the you know the behavior of uh, passengers on indian railways over the last 3 months by inputting data into the tableau software and actually providing some very solid insights to indian railways which can then help progress their business if you put this project onto your resume then you've got a great combination of possibly studying at a good university also learning data analytics from johns hopkins university and then lastly doing a project on tableau software where you have something tangible to show as well all of this which is the learning and the project happening in a virtual world so i think for a bcom student this is very doable and if we talk about ai then of course you know the the sky is the limit right now with the kind of adoption that is happening i was listening to the coursera conference uh, 3 weeks ago and you know imperial college london is one of the top universities when it comes to medical education and the speaker from imperial was talking about how they expect a large part of their mbbs to go online So imagine a, dent, a medicine degree going online in the future. We are not there yet, of course, in India, and I don't think that will happen in the near term. But very practical applications are available even today, which is the BCom example. On Coursera and many other platforms, a lot of the usage of online education has so far been with working adults. You know, we are a massive platform with 60 million learners on our platform, but 85, 90% of those learners are actually working adults. and because we are an online platform agility is built into our spine it is built into our dna and we get feedback from these learners to say is this relevant is this high quality is this helping me in my job now coursera has launched a platform for campuses which is kind of like swayam uh, only in october last year but our core is to be able to bring job ready education to students and if we can bring a lot of that experience to students we will help equip them for the future so i think we are as the dna of our organization is oriented towards that uh, i know dr mantha's university was quite well prepared before covid hit and you know uh, i'd love to uh, to ask him to share some of his live experiences because his students are experiencing that but i think that's probably a brief answer to house uh, at least coursera thinks about this i think education has always had the power to transform lives i think that opportunity has gone up 10x whether it be on campus or whether it be online i think debates like this which can help us understand what the university of the future uh, will be very very helpful 
personally i believe this is a once in a lifetime opportunity to impact many many people and if we can really figure out what this university of the future will look like uh, obviously forecasts are always long but if we can learn together quickly i think we would have done our jobs